Hi, this is your host, Supreme Bharatiya, on behalf of the Linux Foundation. And today we have with us two guests. Uh, first of all, our regular Shuli Goodman, Executive Director of LF Energy, and Lucian Balia, R&D Program Director and Open Source Manager at RTE. Shuli, Lucian, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you so much. It's really good to be back. Thank you. It's a pleasure. Shuli, we have talked to each other, you know, everybody knows you, but uh, uh, Lucian, we are talking for the first time. So can you first of all tell us a bit about RTE? Uh, what do you guys folks do and uh, what is your engagement with the uh, LF Energy project? Yes, of course. So um, RTE is the French Power Transmission System Operator. Um, I guess we are quite an uh, unusual player in the open source uh, landscape. So our uh, experience with open source is quite recent. And um, in fact, um, three years ago, RT decided to embrace open source to accelerate our uh, digitalization strategy. And uh, moving towards open source, we asked ourselves about uh, the proper governance uh, framework to uh, foster open source collaborations. And at that time, we had the opportunity to to meet Shuli, and Shuli um, was working uh, with the Linux Foundation. And on her side, um, she wanted to set up an ambitious initiative uh, dedicated to the energy sector and the energy transition. So then uh, our interests uh, matched very well, and we started uh, this successful collaboration to build LF Energy. So, and I must tell that I'm uh, very proud to see how LF Energy has grown uh, today. Thanks for sharing the story and uh, also how you uh, truly played a critical role in bringing you on board. Now, Shuli, let's uh, hand over the virtual mic to you. Uh, today, we are going to talk about CPATH project. Can you tell us a bit about the project itself? What is it all about? Well, I think that one of the most important things about the transition that we're making with regards to energy is uh, to virtualization and to software-defined infrastructure. And so this is precisely what uh, Luchem and the team are going after with CPATH, is, is to create um, a, a kind of a first offering, a first approach uh, towards open source and the virtualization of substations. Luchem, I want to know uh, from you, uh, of course, you know, you are part of LF Energy, but uh, from your perspective, from RT's perspective, how do you see uh, the CPATH project? Also, as Shuli was talking that, you know, we are, everything is becoming software defined. Everything is kind of becoming virtual. So talk about the project from your perspective and this transition that she talked about. Yeah. So um, power systems, power grids are, are complex systems. You have all the loads, the generators, the grid equipment that uh, interact in, in real time. And um, to um, operate safely power grids, you, you need to act on levers uh, to face, uh, to handle some hazards, continuous hazards, such as outages, fluctuations in consumption or production. And for that, so today we have uh, two kinds of levers, uh, human activated levers and, and automated levers. And with the energy transition and the fact that we are moving to a more complex uh, system with more distributed players, uh, distributed uh, variation sources, and, but also distributed levers to control the grid, um, we want to, uh, we need to rethink about our grid control architecture. And we want to unlock the capability to innovate to bring uh, advanced and adaptive automation functions at the edge of the grid. So when I talked about the edge of the grid, it's uh, the power grid substations, in fact. And um, to um, unlock this innovation and meet our challenges, we um, see two key concepts for that. And uh, these are inspired by the telecom uh, industry, in fact. So those two key concepts are virtualization and cross-industry uh, open source collaboration. Um, so I can develop, if you want, the benefits from uh, virtualization and, and open source, if that makes, uh, makes sense. Yeah, uh, it does. So, so for instance, so first of all, uh, virtualization. Um, of course, it's easier to uh, deploy, upgrade, operate uh, software than hardware. So following the path of the telecom industry, we expect that virtualization will 
uh, unlock innovation will help us to accelerate, but also to reduce deployment, operation, and maintenance uh, uh, costs. Um, but then in the end, we don't want to end with uh, several virtualization platforms that would be vendor-specific virtualization platforms uh, deployed on the field. So we need a cross-industry uh, collaboration. And uh, this is uh, what open source brings. So it, it brings, uh, first of all, the op open source through the leverage, different mod uh, leverage development model will help us to um, uh, get the solution in a uh, timely and cost-effective manner. But also, it, it will facilitate cross-industry uh, collaboration. And on this topic, we have at the crossroads of IT, and operational technology. And so in terms of uh, competencies, mixing competencies from uh, all the parts of the industry will be essential to, to achieve uh, our goals. If you can talk a bit about, number one is, uh, how do you see these projects at LF Energy? Number two is that you did talk about the benefits of uh, going software defined is easier than hardware and virtual also. But at the same time, when we look at all these projects, it also kind of open up the space for others players so that you are not investing all your resource, uh, resources, R&D. Uh, I mean, the energy sector, a lot of players are there, which are your in some cases, I mean, this is not a very competitive market, but still, how does it help to bring these projects under the umbrella of LF Energy, which kind of leads to cross-pollination, but also a lot of collaboration? Yeah, so uh, indeed, I, I think that, um, well, speaking frankly, uh, frankly uh, the CPAS project is uh, disruptive uh, from our, uh, let's say, ecosystem. Um, we have vendors that are uh, used to build devices and to sell devices. And um, I guess it's not easy to, to make a shift uh, to virtualization. So uh, becoming a software company and not only that, but uh, uh, playing in, a, in, a soft, uh, in an open source context. So this is uh, uh, really disruptive. Um, but um, we, not, we looked at the example of the telecommunications uh, industry, where um, players, actors such as AT&T managed to transform their uh, ecosystem through open source collaborations, such as the ONA project that developed um, some of the uh, virtualization stack that is currently used uh, to, to, um, to run the 5G uh, networks. And um, this convinced us that transformation is, um, is, feasible, is feasible, is achievable. But um, so first of all, um, RT is, is a quite modest player, even compared to AT&T. We are um, a smaller company. So in, in order to, to shift the ecosystem, we need to be credible. So we need to, to partner. That's why we partner with LF Energy, because it's... Uh, uh, gives us uh, credibility, uh, visibility. It offers a governance framework that is attractive for collaborations. And um, this is, um, we believe that this is the only way to, to grow the community, to, to reach the critical mass that will uh, allow to make this, this transformation. Uh, and um, I guess that we will enter into a, virtual circle where uh, the community will grow. This will convince the industry that this is the future. It happened uh, in the telecommunications. And, and, um, and for us, um, as an end consumer, it's, it's essential to, um, to achieve these goals because um, this is a way to, uh, to meet the challenges of the energy transition and the development of renewables in a cost-efficient manner um, to get all the innovation that we will need to uh, deliver um, a good uh, service to our uh, consumers, to the uh, energy consumers. Since you're comparing with the 
telcos and one uh, telcos one transition that they went through was also they moved away from a lot of proprietary black boxes to a lot of white box uh, commodity hardware uh, can you talk about what is since you earlier mentioned that uh, hardware is difficult than software so can you talk about is there something similar going with the hardware part of in the energy sector as well where you are moving away from a lot of proprietary boxes towards the white boxes or, you know, maybe open source or commodity hardware as well. So that's the vision. So today um, in a power substation, we have devices that perform some fu automation functions and even um, some very fast automation function that we call protection. So for, for instance, these protections ensure that in case of uh, short circuits or if uh, lightning strikes a power line, that uh, we open the circuits uh, very fast so that we don't endanger uh, people or we don't damage equipment. And um, the vision is, um, so currently it's quite difficult to... Uh, innovate in that field because you, you, you have to go uh, on the field to replace uh, equipment, uh, etc. So with, um, with CPAS, we want to, to move to a new world where those functions will be de uh, deployed as software on uh, quite generic hardware in the substations. And uh, that will um, open lot of possibilities in terms of uh, new new software new innovation that will be deployed uh, at the uh, edge of, of power grids what kind of roadmap you have for lf energy for 2021 well we have three projects that we're launching in the next week uh, which is really quite extraordinary um, we have a uh, microgrid project hyphy um, that is launching uh, next week, um, we're doing a global press release. Uh, Fledge Power, which is a uh, you know, it's a kind of it's it's a power system take on industrial IoT, and then the third project that we are launching is Swanyo, um, which is at the distribution level um, are the software um, for uh, calculation, state estimation. Um, that are really the beginning of the transition from uh, these hard uh, SCADA systems into um, uh, really being able to bring industrial IoT uh, into the you know the power system network operations uh, because they're going to be so necessary for being able to orchestrate and choreograph um, the networks uh, in much the same way that we think about choreographing the networks of you know the, the internet or telecommunications it's, it's a very simple and uh, you know within energy uh, you know it's it's really about balancing supply and demand and the new paradigm when you begin to bring renewable and variable energy in is that in order to manage those peak times, uh, we have to be able to uh, choreograph how we are in relationship. So all of our projects are in that direction. Uh, we have a series of microgrid projects that are supposed to start coming in uh, Q2 from Australia. Um, really trying to bring on uh, an open source data platform and uh, we're in advanced conversations around that. Um, so I often describe and feel like I, we've got like, you know, a hundred plates spinning at the same time um, because, you know, we're really, I, I see that between now and November when COP26 happens in Scotland, that, um, that the world is really looking for places for being able to collaborate at scale. Decarbonization of our economies is going to be uh, complicated and intense. Um, power systems leads that. So the projects that we're really focusing on right now are really directed towards power system transformation. And that's the software. It's, you know, if you have software, uh, reach out to me um, because what we want is to create an ecosystem and a community of utilities and vendors and suppliers that are building this uh, system together. It is the largest a networked system on the planet. It is, it's, it's like a massive, um, mycelium network, um, underneath our planet, uh, which is really all about energy and how we, um, manage energy and power. Awesome. Lucien, 
uh, Shali, thanks for taking time out today and talk about not only this project, but also the whole evolution that is going on, which is software driven, open source driven, and it's virtual. And I look forward to talk to you again. And Shali, as you said, a lot of projects are already in the pipeline. So we'll be seeing each other a lot. Thank you. I hope so. Thank you, Swapno, for everything. I appreciate it. Thank you, Swapnil. It was a pleasure.